I like hanging on the paper too. I feel like a newscaster. So. And you're, and you're on. All right. We're on. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Good morning, everybody. A uh, very exciting day today. Let me first start by uh, saying that I have been MIA for like three days. So I thank you guys for getting this all set up and uh, holding the rope, making sure everything kept going off. We had our ACES uh, meetings this week for uh, our community youth achievement, and uh, it was crazy. It was busy. It was hectic. All oh, day. yeah. And I'm Excellent. really glad I didn't have to worry about work. So thank you. Guys. Hey, yep, that's our job. We got to hold the rope when we can. Yes. Yeah. So that being said, uh, this is you guys. I don't even know what we got going on. What do we here, got going so. on, Christy? Tell us. Well, um, uh, really, Easter. We just finished Easter. up Easter. Everyone, did you guys have a good Easter? Oh, I had a great Easter. You know, we get with the family, have a big uh, brunch. Easter egg hunt? <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that this year. No. <laughs> so much I went going fishing, on in so. town. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. caught a fish. Pretty impressive. I'm an elite fisherman. Oh, okay. Just one? One. <laughs> Listen, I mean, maybe two. It's about quality, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We'll go with that. We also had Kona Ice here. Mm -hmm. Yep. And Adam did not let us down. Like, he joined I it. knew it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. You, uh, did you guys see that video I made? Yeah. Did you get it, Jeff? Yeah. You want to see it? Yeah, let's play it. Okay. Listen, this right cracked here. me up. Yeah. This was so funny. No, not that one. The one uh, the one where I was making fun of Adam. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got that one, too. I can play that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. let's check that one out. I didn't know you wanted to see it that It was one. just so funny that we talked about it, and then he went out and fulfilled the prophecy. Yeah. Of course he did. He <laughs> yes. loves it. So well, that was also, the funniest part. a little insight on that, that she may be coming to visit us. Oh, oh yeah. Ooh, that's, listen, really? Mm -hmm. Very exciting, but that's you guys. You guys well, and I'm oh. hoping she brings some Kona ice that <laughs> day, too. Did like you yeah. put that on our page? or the, uh, That's on the Family Used Car Center used Instagram car center. page. Okay. Under the reels. Yeah, but so that video of Adam was actually from the last time they were here. Yeah. I'm not sure when that was, but. So I heard through the Kona ice grapevine that uh, he had three Konas. Wow. <laughs> wow. He really takes advantage Great of Great job, them, Adam. Right? <laughs> he's just got a belly full of ice all day. Yeah. You know? Hey, while, I'm, he's I'm looking looking it, while he's looking it up, have you guys, I'm, this might, might not be big in your world, but in my world, the Mexican pizza is back from Taco Bell. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh That's kind of my world. So, listen, I'm going to lose some friends here. I don't eat Taco Bell, so. <laughs> you shouldn't. It's not that great. <laughs> I have no idea when, Even when it became. Even if you don't like it, the Mexican yeah. pizza yeah. is back. I've never had one. Oh, I'm going to make you one. Taco Bell is that place you where. You don't have to. They have a Taco Bell. I know. Yeah. Now I don't yeah, have to Yeah, they brought it, it back. Look, it's on the screen. I'm so excited about this. It's almost contagious. Like, if you eat there at once, then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I can go back. But yeah, if you no. just stay away from it, then I'm you're I'm not good. a Taco Bell guy, so uh, well, every time I see one of these like Taco Bell phenomenons that you know I tell you young kids love Taco Bell and I'm like yeah no, I don't get it uh, yeah well you should try the Mexican yeah, pizza well, maybe listen, I eat enough maybe. pizza I don't eat Mexican all right pizzas. well let's <laughs> talk about uh, Bullhead Bike Week this yep. is a big deal in our world obviously a lot of bikers coming to town yeah sounds very interesting and we have a we have a good guest to talk to I that about know. so wait till you guys see who our yeah. guest is. we went uh, the opposite direction from last week so it was very fun to talk to larry but uh, we're going to talk to someone from the other side of the table so so there's the flyer for it right there if anyone yes. needs to know any information so we got the got flyer it. there's a bike raffle we got quiet riot in town there's some big things happening mm -hmm. with that for sure we got a lot of stuff on here yeah I we know. do yeah. Desert Storm. Desert Storm. Yeah, I might go up there and get some shots of all the boats and stuff. You know, because they have the boats. Uh, what's that main road called? Where the, the Party Street, where they McCulloch? have them all sideways. McCulloch? Yeah. yeah. Don't they I, have them all sideways the, like that? Yeah, the, what do they call it? Street Show? Street Fair? Yeah. Or something? I've never street been party. there for it. I think it'd be pretty cool. Listen, these boats are like, uh, my boat is like a the front quarter too. of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So. There's, oh a, there's a photo of it right there. A couple of the boats. They have yeah. to bring them in sideways. They're so big. That's insane yeah. when you see that well, on the highway. And they do somewhat <laughs> of a poker run down the, yeah. the lake, which Listen, is pretty it's cool. It's the weirdest thing when you're out on the river, right? And you have like me and my little boat, some guy in his fishing boat, and then a million dollar <laughs> offshore boat flies yeah, by. You're like, like super what, two million. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, what am I doing here? You know, so. I should anyway. probably go back to the other side. Uh, yeah, so very, uh, very fun event. So always a lot of fun. Yes. Um, let's talk about, I mean, in town this week, and it is endless. So we have um, Loki, you know, her mm. eat, drink, to be married is happening this Loki weekend. Loki Lau. Yeah. Sudden Link, uh, Bullhead's putting on a bubble party at the mm. Sudden Link Center I wonder if there are any bikers at that. Well, uh, no, I would <laughs> the not bubble party? think so. <laughs> like SpongeBob? But you we know? were invited. Yeah. Oh, you, you guys should definitely go. go. I, I thought you would throw yeah. that on <laughs> yeah. yeah, that sure. sounds like a great event for Christy. I yeah. might go to this right here, the Loki Expo. Yeah, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. Looks like there's going to be Oh, you a lot want me to go back there. to that? No, okay. yeah. That one, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I might, I might yeah. go to that. 
That's right up Destry's alley. That's all the alley. video and photography yeah. there. Yeah. Right. Since you will be getting married, I mean. I will be soon, yep. yeah. <laughs> Next year. Yeah, tie the knot. Yeah. So what should we tell so them about that? So you got to find that? a videographer is what you're saying? Wait, did I break the wrong news? I don't know. <laughs> no, you're fine. Everyone knows. <laughs> but, yeah, I do have to find a videographer. She's on. She's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know if we need one. I'm like, oh, we kind of do need one because I, I sell these videos to people, you know. Like, i got to have one. <laughs> <laughs> if you can film your own wedding, you're next level, man. Yeah. And then the bubble party? Yep, we just talked about the bubble party. That's going to be at the Sudden Link Center. There's a horseshoe tournament going on at Ken Park. And then Peace in the Park, too. I'm really excited about that. You can go and get some Serenity. <laughs> I was going to say, what's that? I know. <laughs> no, they, it's, it's, it's at Rotary Park. It's a big deal. Some yoga, some Reiki. I mean, you're not interested, but I'm interested. Shane doesn't look like yeah, he's impressed with that kind it. of stuff, right? Yeah, I could do yoga. That's oh. it. We should do yoga on the show one day. You want to? Mm. <laughs> like Christine, I have balance. She's very peaceful, and I'm yeah, the opposite. You two of can. That. <laughs> I said, hey, Shane, can I come do yoga with your football players? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I think do I, I have to? Yeah, he's noise. like, really? Yeah. <laughs> we could get Shane on camera doing yoga right here, though. I we might have to move the table. Oh, good. Lord. <laughs> What's the one where you just lay there? <laughs> the sleeping pose. I could do that one. Sleep. <laughs> that's my uh, that's my yoga. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes. Well, Very I'm exciting. excited that you're here because I we were not sure that you're going to be here to do the interview. I wasn't either, but here I am, and I'm super excited. Um, we did miss you. That's what I like to hear. It's a little <laughs> quiet without your yeah. me barking around all the time. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm there for. And it's a lot to keep track of what Jeff's doing. Yeah. I mean, he's wild. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff back here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I like I said, I uh, I'm very appreciative that you guys held the rope. Um, I know it's a pain in the butt when I'm uh, off site for days at a time sometimes, and uh, yeah. I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Well, the ACES is a big deal, and so I'm excited to see how that works out. I am super excited for it too. And if you don't know, the ACES is we uh, recognize top you know student athletes, athletes, teachers, and uh, I'll tell you. For all the times that people sit around and say, gosh, this generation, this generation, or what are we doing here? Um, going out and seeing that and talking to these kids is the complete opposite. You're like, holy cow, these kids are amazing. They're halfway through college. They're, you know, volunteering. They're changing things in their school. They're going and doing big national things, going to universities. And you go, oh, we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the nice thing um, that I've noticed, and maybe Facebook can notarize this a little bit much more more now, that there's a lot of kids from town that go to school now, mm -hmm. that are going off to college, whether it's sports or a academics. Um, so I'm proud and pretty impressed with yeah. our students and our schools. So I apologize if I ever say anything bad about the youth. They're I know, okay. take it back. <laughs> They're all right. Take it back. <laughs> They're all right, okay, so. what do you think? Should we get to our... I'm very excited to talk to our guests. So. Uh, all right, we're out. I'll see you guys. Okay. All right. Here we have it. Here I am, <laughs> my special guest, the Bullet City Chief of Police. Sir? Good morning. Pleasure to meet you. Uh, well, we've actually met before, so pleasure to have you on the show. And I tell you, I wanted to start out by telling you how much I enjoyed seeing you make an effort to get out in the community. Was that, was that a conscious effort, or was that more of a getting out and kind of seeing what's going on in town? Yeah, so I, I appreciate that question. Um, I think in my almost 20 years now of law enforcement, and a student of history, I, I watched kind of how law enforcement has evolved over the last several decades. And I think uh, over time, we kind of lost that uh, core mission of getting out in the community, building those relationships, making sure that we're doing the things that citizens want to see out of their police department. And so it was absolutely a conscious effort. I think Bullhead PD has done a good job. Um, but as with everything, I think you can do better. And so there was a lot of ideas that I had uh, in order to get us more out in the community. You know, I, I, would, I don't know if eating a bunch of chilies was one of them, but that's where I ran into you the one time, and, uh, and I say one time, it's almost every day, so right. not you, but me. Uh, but, you know, I've seen you out at community events, around the schools, and I tell you, I think it's great because it really puts a different perspective on seeing you in a non, 
you know, in the moment of some type of police action being an accident, a crime, whatever else. And it was very enjoyable to see the people interacting. You know, the last year or two of, I mean, police policing has to have been just crazy. It went from, you know, okay. what we knew to all this craziness to what it sounds like you're doing now coming out the other side of what is like kind of the new way of going about it. Yeah, right. So over the last couple of years, kind of starting in 2014, and but certainly over the last couple of years, there's been some really bad negativity about police, and some of that we own. Uh, some, some of that law enforcement has done wrong. And that's another thing that I've noticed over my career that I wanted to make sure that we don't do wrong. Um, here in Mojave County, Arizona specifically, um, you know, we get, we get a lot of support, and that's, that's a blessing because there's other places in the country you don't get that. And so making sure that, um, you know, we keep building those relationships, keep the things that I've already inherited from great people who have come before me to, to establish that, uh, making sure that we build on that. You know, also, like I said, being a student of history, you know, uh, specifically our constitutional republic, you know, as opposed to anywhere else in the world, uh, Americans enjoy something that no one else has in, in human history, and that is, is the, your government is put there by the citizens, and your government's supposed to be responsible to the citizens. And so um, I, it's just, for me, it, it, you know, it's something I, I'm just passionate about, I care about, and I want to make sure that uh, we're listening to what our citizens have to say. No, I think that's a, I think that's a great approach, and I think you're right. You know, there was some... You know, obviously not being on your side of things, but there was a point where we kind of lost sight of what that was, and it's great to see people put a focus on it. And that really is, um, you know, serving the people is what our government is all about. So um, absolutely, uh, very cool. Uh, what else do you have going on that's, you know, kind of in line with those efforts? Uh, like you said, you're making a conscious effort to get out there more. You're making conscious effort to be a little more aware of what's going on. What What are some other things that you're actively doing? to accomplish that goal. Yeah, so one of the big things I think um, you, you had just mentioned uh, in, in the last segment about uh, the youth, right? And so uh, what I want to make sure we do is that we get involved in schools that we're there, what we call uh, positive non-enforcement contacts. So we're not out there because a call for service. We're not out there to arrest somebody. You guys always have great names for that yeah, stuff. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I want to make sure that we get involved in the schools. I, I encourage our officers, you know, if local schools are having a, a basketball game or whatever, if they're not taking a call, they've got their radio on, stop into the gym. Stop in. Cheer on the local team. Um, you know, some other things that we're working on. Um, so, so that we've done and we're going to continue to do now is when uh, schools get back in session after um, summer break and Christmas break is for the first week we're going to get our officers out we're going to hold graveyards over and they're going to get out into the uh, school zones have their lights and uh, lights on slowing people down but also I'm asking them uh, encouraging them to get out and interact with the students and I can I'm happy to say that without having to be told Every one of our officers got out. They're high-fiving kids, that's encouraging cool. them to get that's back awesome. in class. Oh, it's, it was amazing. It was amazing to watch. And that's the kind of thing that I think uh, keeps those relationships going because there's the next generation of citizens that say, hey, you know what, the police, is, they're pretty good in our community. You know, I had, a, uh, I had an interaction with one of your officers. Uh, was not in trouble this time. So, uh, <laughs> but I ran into uh, the gentleman you have at the high school, at Mojave High School. Oh, yes. And uh, he came in. Worked out with the boys, yeah. chit chatted, this, that, and the other thing. And what you know, what a nice guy, great energy. And you talk about a, a viewing an officer in a different light than when you're in a in a hot situation, you know. And uh, I really enjoyed it. So I don't know where uh, where you found that guy, but he uh, he was a riot. So much appreciated. Yeah. So we we went through a uh, a selection process on what I believe the philosophy should be for a school resource officer. We asked uh, one of the vice principals to sit on our board. So they have some input on who we select to go work at their school. I thought that was a, appropriate um, that they would have a say so in that. You know, they need to be able to have a relationship with the person we're sending there too. And uh, th this young man was just amazing. The, the effort that he put forth on his written response on why he should be selected. He did extremely well through the interview process. 
And, uh, yeah, I mean, he's just a go-getter. He Tell you is, what else I liked. He squatted 300 pounds, which I thought was impressive. Oh, yeah. So, he, uh, yeah, he's a pretty tough yeah, guy, too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. If he would have went in there and squatted 135 pounds, those kids would have been like, nope, not this guy. <laughs> he went in there put some work in. That's important. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he's been doing amazing, and I hear so much positive feedback. And that's so great to hear when you have – teachers parents administrators coming and telling you hey man your guy is doing a fantastic that's fantastic job. Yeah. i think that's a great move now i know you have some um some actual policing to do um <laughs> and one of those things that creates challenges are you know we have a we have a tourism town you know um we have people coming in going out towing trailers doing all this other stuff <laughs> and you're kind of coming into like a sweet spot because you have um this bike run coming up this week yeah how, what kind of challenges does that create? Um, I can't imagine that you get to bring in a huge excess force like Metro used to do back in the day <laughs> to manage that. You know, I, yeah, that'd be nice. There was like a fleet of horses roaming around. You know, <laughs> I, I can't imagine we're doing that. But uh, how do you manage that a little bit? Do you just stay in? You know, we we talked to Larry uh, putting on the event. Nice guy. He's on his on his game. He's got plans. He's got structure. He's got security. Um, how much of that is working with him? You know, how much of that is just kind of being prepared? Yeah, so uh, first I'd like to say that um, in my time at Bullhead City, um, when uh, City Manager Cotter took over, I think it was 2010, he has done such a fantastic job getting so much tourism here, the sports tourism. The, uh, the council's been so supportive of, of, you know, putting our parks together or what they used to be when I first got to Bullhead. I mean, it's just, just amazing. So we're getting all this stuff in here, but with getting these crowds coming in it does uh, pose a challenge so uh, specifically on the biker run you know previously as you well know it was over in Laughlin and as you mentioned you know Metro they could bring 400 officers down they've got an intel unit they got you know a, a mounted unit aerial units and all those things we don't have and so it does pose some challenges so in this first year that this is going on we don't really know what to expect uh, so I reached out to uh, Department of Public Safety Arizona DPS and ask them to provide some resources for this year. They're providing substantial resources um, to plan for this because even though we love encouraging people and events to come here, uh, my job is to keep the citizens safe. And so um, DPS, uh, wonderful agency. Um, they've got a great leader in uh, Colonel Silbert and uh, he's always uh, you know, willing to have his agency help out agencies like ours. And it's, it, I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So yeah, they've got a, a lot of resources that are gonna be coming down for this week uh, and helping us out. And so they have a lot of units that we don't have like those Intel units and they've got, you know, other things. Uh, are they bringing horses? No, we don't have oh. any horses, unfortunately. <laughs> those, those are a sight to see. But so we're, we're, we're planning for this event, at, like I said, kind of not knowing what to expect. I mean, it could be 5,000, it could be 10,000. So we're, we're planning for that bigger crowd. He said 20,000. Um, yeah, I mean, it certainly we could. No, we're not right? ready for I mean, 20. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that so, changes everything. And working with uh, Larry, we've been meeting with him. I've had our... Um, our gang unit has been and our captain has been meeting with uh, Larry to try to say, hey, here's kind of what we're seeing, you know, as far as intel goes. Here's what we think should be uh, in place and just working with him. So he's understanding what we're seeing and the things that we have to prepare for. And, um, you know, and then he can uh, plan accordingly. So yeah. very good. Like I said, I know we live in such a unique area. Um, and one of the unique things that we actually have that I don't even know how you even get started on that is the river. <laughs> I yeah. mean, so you just talk about all the craziness that goes on right on the banks of the river, but then you talk <laughs> about, I mean, you guys, have, how many boats do you guys have? How many offers do you have out there? It's, yeah. it's a whole unique thing that other places don't ever have to think about or deal with. Yeah, right, and, and uh, the unfortunate thing is, so we've, we sit in this tri-state area, so there's three states around here and there's multiple agencies, but for, as long as I've known, uh, Bullhead's been the lead agency out on the water. Um, we get some help from Nevada Department of Wildlife. We get some help from Arizona Game and Fish, um, but we're the primary agency out there. So we have five boats. Uh, we don't have five boats on the river every single day just because of manpower. Um, so we, what we do, like we do with anything, is you know we deploy our resources to where they're needed the most, whether a section of the river, days of the week, and, and such. We also, um, thankfully again, um, City Manager Cotter and our, our council have been so supportive to go out and, and um, 
We contract with a uh, water rescue and safety. They're uh, certified lifeguards out on jet skis that help us patrol the river. They help with medical issues. They help with crashes. They help with a whole bunch of things that our mission would not be successful without them. So um, yeah, right after this bike run, we were right into river season and it gets busy. It gets, uh, you know, it can get a little wild, but I, I will tell you that yeah. the way we've been doing things, um, even though there's a, you know, at least a tenfold increase of traffic on the river, the accidents don't show a tenfold increase. And I, I'm, I'm happy to say it's because I, the, the job that our guys and gals are doing out there, yep. uh, keeping us All safe. All those local guys are talking about, you know, we drive by and, you know, which is great. Community parks packed full, <laughs> Davis camps packed full. <laughs> and we all go, get me out of here, you know. And uh, it's just we have so many people come into town to enjoy. I mean, I have friends who move out of area and almost everyone's like, man, I miss the river. Yeah. You know, the river here is dirty. Oh, the river here, you can't go out and you can't do this. You know, our river is such a great resource. It is. So, it is. Uh, now, I told you I wouldn't talk about any controversial topics, <laughs> but I got to bring it up. Uh -oh. <laughs> These dang center medians. Oh, are they helping or are they, are they uh, driving anybody crazy? It seems to me uh, that it's driving a lot of people crazy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just me. Okay. So that's, that's the did important it, did thing. Did it cut down on the accidents, though? I mean, that was the purpose of it. Uh, I, I haven't seen a noticeable dis yeah. decrease. Right. Um, but, you know, time will tell. You can look at averages, uh, you know, looking at a one-year span is not good when you look at three to five year spans then you can kind of get a feel for it so we'll wait and see how it, yeah. how it turns out for well, sure i'll tell you shane's ratio of bad words driving has gone up <laughs> so <laughs> i know happens. that that statistic is rock solid yeah so. it, it does make it more difficult on us when we have the section of the center median up in the north uh, bullhead area you know just simple traffic we see something going on the other way we can't turn around on them anymore so we have to go to those you areas guys start hopping those around. curbs and breaking your cars <laughs> yeah. we'll fix them for you right. but uh you know i don't know how it's going to help you in the moment right. you know what i mean so so that's that's always interesting now I, uh, we talked a little bit about the river, things like that. Do you guys do, uh, like, river ride-alongs or anything? I can send Destry out there, get some video. We actually do. Do, like, a community spotlight of uh, what you guys actually yes. do and uh, deal with? We, we do ride-alongs both in the car or out on the river. We've, We've had, had that bullhead in the cops. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really well, they cool. used to have, uh, you know, that local station that would, I forget. TV2. TV2, yeah, yeah that, that, that did that for a while. Yep. Um, and, yeah, I'm, we're all for that. One of the things that I think uh, we need to do better at, I mean, we need, I always jokingly, half jokingly say we need to take a page out of the, the fireman's playbook. They're, they're happy to tell everybody how great they are. And so we need to do that better, right? And, and if that means having ride-alongs with media or whatever the case may be to show what our guys and gals are doing out there, I, I think that's a good thing. Absolutely. You know, I think part of that, you know, going back to what we started talking about, where there was this transition period where, you know, this has always been the norm and then we had all this craziness over covid and um you know everyone started looking to police differently and like you said it's very unique we have such a uh you know conservative two-way base out here and this and yeah. that that we're probably not as affected as most but it really has kind of uh come back to holy cow we need the police and we need them to be good yeah you know i mean you've seen places where they've not embrace that and they're struggling i mean yeah. things are just a hot mess in some of these places um and i think that you know i think that we are going in the right direction i know uh i saw a uh, advertisement you're hiring officers yes. to jump over a wall and i was like i'm out on that one so <laughs> <laughs> but uh but you know obviously if that's the you know if that's the lens you're looking through you're going to hire the right people do the sure. right things and I very seriously would love to send the guys out and do a community spotlight on the police department. I don't know if you've seen any of those segments we yeah. do, but um, we've always done it on businesses and things like that. Um, I would really like to, uh, to d extend that same reasoning that we want to show the community how good things are here. Um, and it would be great to do it with you guys. I would um, be happy to you know, have that happen. Give yeah. us a quick little tour of your facilities, some of the things you do, whatever you're able to do or willing. Um, we'd love to do that and really uh, like feature you guys. Like I said, I really enjoyed seeing you out in the community. And uh, uh, I know uh, the previous police chief was a nice guy and he was out and about. But I think I talked to him maybe three times ever. And I think I've talked to you uh, three times in the last two weeks. So, <laughs> uh, and I'm out and about. You know, I'm, I'm in the community every yeah, day. Yeah. So if I'm seeing you out there, so is everybody else. Oh, so no, I appreciate that. What, very much. what are some of the uh, other things you guys have going on? I know that. Uh, we kind of covered what I wanted to talk about. Um, do you guys have any events coming up? I, like you mentioned, hiring. Yeah. Um, what else do you guys have going on Anything that you want to get out there? 
Yeah, so um, back to some of the community events. Um, you know, we did our first uh, Coffee with a Cop last November 3rd, and I thought it went well. We were at TASA. Um, so uh, we, we sat down and kind of game plan what we're going to be doing in the future. We want to do a, uh, we haven't finalized yet, we're hoping to do a donuts with the cops, right? Kind of, you know, get the whole <laughs> donut cop thing. You're just going to play right into right? it, huh? Yeah, yeah. I'm, fine with, <laughs> I'm, I'm fine with that. No one ever says donuts with a car guy, but I promise you, it's donuts <laughs> with a car guy. <laughs> um, we're, we're also looking at another, uh, uh, that would be in uh, June if it goes through, um, for National Donut Day. And we're also looking, we found another uh, uh, fun idea, National Hot Dog Day comes up in July, so we're hoping to team up with uh, a local business. And what we want to do is, is number one, we, we'd like to highlight businesses uh, that are uh, in the community, and, and, but uh, we want to give people a chance to come in in those non-enforcement situations and just ask questions, talk to the police, get to know us, um, let us let us you know explain whatever it is that's on your mind about that. So we're doing those types of things. Um, also, one of the big things that's really important to me uh, about uh, making the I, I want to make Bullhead the most professional police force in the nation. And one of those things is is training that we do. We just completed. We started last year. Just completed it this year. Forty hours of A to Z constitutional law training. With in my opinion the best constitutional uh, lawyer as it applies to policing in the nation. He's been doing it for over 41 years. His name is Randy Means with uh, Randy Means and Associates. Um, phenomenal guy, amazing. We got everybody through, I mean, nuts and bolts from, you know, what's reasonable suspicion and probable cause all the way through uh, doing search warrants. And I asked him, because he's, he's trained personally over half a million people personally and in every state in the union and I asked him I said do you know of another agency that's done this 40 hours for everybody he says no I'm not aware of one and so that goes back to the heart of our mission right I mean we're out there to protect lives uh, keep the community safe but we're also up there to uphold your constitutional rights and we need to get that right uh, you guys entrust us with so much power and authority we need to get that right and that's part of what we're doing here at Bullhead PD. Yeah that's very powerful and I you know I couldn't agree more um, you know, some of the things they've talked about, um, you know, non-lethal things, this, that, and the other thing, we don't see a lot of it here, but it seems like either we have better news coverage or we have seen an uptick in violent crimes or things in the area, not necessarily Bullhead City. So I, I'm lumping you in a little bit with just general culture sure, here. Sure. Um, you know, and again, that goes back to us having such a unique, you know, your Bullhead City, then your Fort Mojave, then your Indian land, and then your you know, yeah. California, yeah. all in, you know, one little walk. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, is, is there really an uptick in things or um, I think nationally there is, uh, or is it just a perception thing? Is it? No, de definitely nationally. Let me start there first. Nationally, there is absolutely a huge increase in major crimes, whether there be, uh, you know, murder, shootings, uh, armed robberies. I mean, it, it's it's bad. Um, that the, uh, the empirical data is everywhere now. It shows that. I mean, this is the worst since the early 90s for sure. Um, I, I think a lot of those policies that you mentioned, uh, you know, dating back uh, two years ago um, uh, with the incident that was happening with George Floyd and stuff, again, you know, some things we've done wrong in, in, in law enforcement, and they do need to change. But the, I, I think, in my opinion, an overreaction in some of those areas of talking about defunding the police well, those areas are abolishing a police force right, right, entirely. Right, and so those areas now are saying, "Oh, wait a minute, we're getting a bunch of crime." Yeah, if now. I was a homeowner there, I'd be like, oh, "Get me out of here!" Yeah, yeah. So I think with that, um, and now they're trying to refund their police departments, and, and yeah. you know, amazingly. Um, but I think that just kind of spreads, right? So we don't necessarily have a problem here locally, but we do get some problems coming from other areas that want to maybe take up refuge here. But so we battle that a little bit, but we're, we're way better off than, than a lot of areas in this country for sure. Yeah. We got a question in the chat real quick, if you don't mind. Sure. Yes. Uh, I need a haircut, Jeff. What? <laughs> and, uh, oh. no, it wasn't Sorry. that. Um, somebody asked, Carol actually uh, asked if uh, you were going to bring back the police auxiliary. Yeah. So that's an idea that we've been, um, so thinking what is about the police so the police auxiliary is uh, their um, uh, volunteers and when I first got to Bullhead there was a long-standing auxiliary program where we'd have them they would come in we you know they're in uniforms they go through certain training we would utilize them for special events traffic and just a whole bunch of different things 
um, you know, during COVID, as, as uh, you know, a lot of things got stopped then, it got stopped. Um, just, you know, allowing people coming in and out of the uh, police department that didn't have to be there. So, yes, we are looking at that in the future. I don't know. Uh, I would want to retool it a little bit uh, to make it. It, it kind of got to the point where it wasn't as functional as it used to be. So if we did bring it back, I'd want to make sure that we have a very good mission for it and, and uh, provide a, a good service for the citizens. Cool. So, so there is a use for it as long as it's... Uh, as long as it's productive, yeah. Yeah, improved with the way things have always yeah. needed to improve. So many things just kind of get left alone. Yeah. And then the times, I don't want to say pass them by, but situations change, needs change. Yeah, yeah. We see it in the car business all the time. You know, what used to be an inner partner was one of the one guy who could type, you know, and now it's a 10 <laughs> man team. So, yeah, that's true. you know, if we would have never evolved out of that, we would have never got to right. where we're at here. So. Also, we got a picture of you we wanted you to elaborate on. Oh, yes. So, uh, as I had mentioned before we, we got on, um, that is actually one of my most favorite pictures. Uh, unfortunately, it uh, the, the best part of it for me is cropped out. So, that was almost seven years ago, and my son had just been born, so he was a couple days old, and I'm actually holding him uh, yeah. in that picture. I don't know who uh, cropped that picture, but, man, they robbed us of the best part. I know yeah. it. I know he it. He said yeah. seven years yeah. old? Yeah. yeah, he's almost seven. He'll be seven in June, so it was almost seven years ago, and, I, yeah, I just love that. We've got that picture hanging on my wall at home, That's and cool. I just I just love it. Oh, thank thank great you picture. for that. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> you know, uh, how does, you know, what you do and having a family and all that stuff, how does that kind of all encompass into one thing, right? I'm sure that when you go into work every day, you think about how would I want my kid to be treated? How would, sure. you know what I mean? Yeah. What, what, what community do I want from? I know I do. When I go and I go, man, I want my kids to have better than there is now. That's why I stay at what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, and that's a lot of my why, you know what I mean? I, I'd imagine it's a much grander scale for you yeah for sure so my wife kind of half jokingly says that uh you know ever since we've been together uh she goes i'm glad you're not a cop anymore because <laughs> you know i'm not out on the street wait, right wait <laughs> <What>? <laughs> yeah you know she says that half jokingly because she i mean she sees you know i mean um police officers uh you know take an oath to to uphold that constitution but they're also when they take that oath they're going out there and they're putting their lives on the line uh, you know every day you don't know what could happen and so that, you know, we take that very serious. And um, talking about, uh, you know, the community and the family and stuff like that, I think that's what drives us. I know it certainly drives me. You know, I want to make sure that, uh, you know, our community is safe. I want to make sure that people can enjoy that American dream, you know. Uh, go out, go to parks, and, 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 and go to schools and not have to worry about crime, you know. Um, so that's very important to me. When I teach down at the academy, I still teach some classes. I don't get to teach as much as, as I used to, but one of the things that I talk about, I have uh, in the ethics and professional class, I have all the recruits stand up and tell me why they wanted to be a police officer. And I, I, I start off by telling them, don't tell me that oral board answer about c keeping the community <laughs> safe, because I know that. that. That's important, and I know that. Tell me why. And uh, it usually comes down to two answers. One, um, they had a family in law enforcement or two, it's because of a positive interaction with a police officer. And I say, you guys gotta remember that. Every time you put on your badge and your gun and you walk out there, every single contact, you have to be as positive as that situation allows you to be and, and be professional. And it does drive us to make sure that, yeah, look, I want my kids to be able to go to the park. I want my kids to be able to go out and do whatever and not have to worry about these things. So it absolutely drives us uh, to make sure that those things are, are, are done right and, and to keep everybody safe. And, uh, you know, it, it is a hard balance uh, because we deal with, they say 10% of the population, 90% of the time. So you see people at their worst and uh, it's hard to keep that balance about coming home and you had, you know, a number of horrible things that happened but you still got to pay attention to your family and make sure that you're, you're doing the right thing Staying as a parent. Staying positive. Yep. Yeah, we had talked about it, you know, off camera before, and uh, one of the sales managers in here holding a meeting, and uh, we were like, man, we do that in the car business. We go home, <laughs> and we're like, we're done. Like, we're tapped out. I can't imagine, you know, dealing with that 10%, you know, at the worst, and then going home to a family. So yeah. we really appreciate, um, and I think the world is starting to really appreciate the police force again. Um, we really enjoy having you. Uh, like I said, I, 
I joke about running into your chilies, but uh, <laughs> ran into your chilies a couple times. Yes. Um, but I, every time I see it, it's a great interaction, and uh, I really appreciate you coming on. Well, thank you for having um, me. And we would like to get involved and, and maybe go out and do a community yeah. spotlight with you, um, give you guys an opportunity to kind of tell your story like we have, have so I, many other businesses. So I would be very appreciative of that'd that. That would be great, man. Yeah. Stay thank tuned for that one. Thank you so much.